Hey, Jerome. Hey there. How are you? Doing well. Well, doing well, doing well. How are you, Ali? Doing well. Awesome, awesome. Great to see you again. Yeah, so great to talk with you again. It's been a while. It has. <laughs> it has. Greetings from Indiana. Greetings. Yeah. Yes. Are you still in Texas? Right now? now, currently, yeah, I'm in Texas right now. I'll be here just for a couple more days, and then I'll be heading elsewhere okay. on another on another adventure but but yeah yeah i've been in texas yeah uh, yeah you've you've been to texas before i have yeah i've been to houston before um i've been to dallas before i think that's okay. about it okay you've been to h-town and d-town <laughs> yep where are you in texas so I'm in the San Antonio region. Okay. So I'm three hours away from Houston, from H-Town, and I'm five hours away from Dallas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. What, what were you doing in, in Houston? What, what did you enjoy about that? Um, when I went to Houston, I had a really good friend that was living there at the time. Um, my friend was there. So I went to visit her. Um, but she doesn't live there anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed Houston. It was a nice city there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Dallas, what was the contrast with Dallas? Um, so my, my cousin lives in Dallas, my aunt and um, uncle and my cousins live there. So I went there to visit them when I was in Dallas. So, <laughs> cool. cool. Yep. So it's all kind of because of uh, friends and family that, that got you into the Lone Star State? Yep. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay. Is is it usually that motivation, like when it comes to traveling, because you've been to, you know, a few places, you know, a few places around. So when it comes to your traveling, is it usually based on uh, friendship reasons or is it based on fulfillment reasons? Like what 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 genuinely inspires you to step out? Yeah, um, I would say it's definitely a mixture of both. I've done a lot of um, traveling on my own as well um so yeah it just it really just depends i love to travel to visit friends um but like i said you know like i traveled to costa rica by myself um i've moved a couple different places in the country and lived um on my own a few times um so um, yeah i would say it's just a mixture but um yeah i'm ready to get back to traveling very soon because i've been kind of in the same place in Indiana for a while now. So I would love to get out a little bit. <laughs> okay, the, the travel bug bit you, you're missing, you're missing it a little bit? Definitely. Um, I'm just really craving like some adventure right now, so. <laughs> yeah, because when, when it comes to adventuring on your own, you know, traveling on your own, exploring on your own and just really broadening your horizons. I was raised as an only child so I feel like <clears throat> in a certain way, I kind of feel like I had an advantage when it comes to being able to be alone without being lonely. Yeah. So what do you feel gave you that advantage to be able to be alone without, without that sense of loneliness, to, to travel on your own without, without worry? Right. Um, well, I will say there was a lot of times when I did feel lonely. So it's definitely a journey um, <laughs> to be becoming comfortable with myself and just being myself and nobody else. Um, but I think that the biggest thing for me was having like a balance. So I realized how important community and family are. Um, but I also still really, really value alone time. I feel like I have like a social meter that once I get past a certain point, it's like really time for me to like come back and be alone and um, rejuvenate and things like that. So um, I think um, I'm in a lot better of a place right now because I do have a lot of friends and family close by. So I have a good balance of um, getting that alone time and also a really good sense of community right now. So, um, but yeah, I think it really just, there's a lot of breakthroughs you have to go through and um, getting into like different hobbies and things like that, that that are really your, um, your authentic interests and um, things like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And I love the way that you illustrated it. You called it a social meter. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> I have not heard that before. Like, a, is it like a bar that, that goes up or down? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. I think, um, you know, I love being around friends and family, but um, for me, there's like a certain point where I become like too overwhelmed and then I just need like some time by myself, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, I just think it's, it's just having a good balance. Um, but yeah, so I see the value in both. I see the value in having times of solitude and also um, having that community to, to support you and um, enjoy, just enjoy time with other people too, yeah. so yeah. I resonate, I, I resonate with you, Ali. You know, I completely agree. I'm very much introverted at heart. You know, the, the social media can kind of give the, the illusion that my social meter is all the way high, you know, that I have an endless right. supply of, of extroversion or that I'm always talking or I'm always around others, but I spend the majority of all my days alone, you know, in silence and solitude, very comfortable with, with being alone. So when it comes to recharging that social battery and filling up that social meter, the meter, <laughs> what were some of those hobbies that you were talking about that that you enjoy by yourself that really fills you up, that fills up your cup in that way? Yeah, um, well, I really enjoy cooking and experimenting in the kitchen. That's one of my favorite hobbies. Um, I enjoy going out to nature by myself, um, like going on walks, going on hikes, um, just being able to meditate and find stillness while I'm in there. Um, I have really gotten into yoga lately, so, I've been practicing yoga um, right now. I've been doing a lot of studying on, um, uh, how do I say it? It's pretty much um, status correction is what I'm really getting into. So studying the laws and how um, uh, this whole matrix that we live in kind of was created and how we can kind of play um, both roles in the public and in the private. Um, so I'm getting really deep into that right now with my studies. So spending a lot of my alone time um, getting into that stuff and studying and um, also seeing how like, religion relates to all of it. And the Bible, um, about how the Bible is really like a law book. Um, just some, just really getting deep into um, studying and growing um, spiritually in that way. So um, yeah, I would say I, I really, really value my, um, alone time and just free time and things like that. Um, but yeah, I just keep going back to balance because also it's so important to have that community too. But yeah, I would say those are some of like my main hobbies. Awesome, thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah, you're really getting deep, you know, <laughs> really getting deep. I, I mean, this is a new one for me. I've never even heard status correction. Correct yeah. me, but status correction. Yeah, status correction. Um, so that's pretty much, um, sorry, something's falling on my desk. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, correcting my status from um, like a US citizen or a corporate entity to um, being more like sovereign, or some people would say like a US national. So um, getting deep into understanding the dual legal system that we live in. Um, in the different jurisdictions that we can operate within, um, whether it's in the public or the private. So, um, yeah, I'm still learning all about it. I'm like a never ending journey that <laughs> there's just so much knowledge to gain with it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going through the process of um, kind of correcting my status in that way. Very interesting. This is fascinating because I know that, you know, Traditionally, I guess if we're born into this society, you know, as, as soon as we come, like we're given a number, we're given the name, we're given like all this stuff and we're just in the system. Yeah. And, you know, when it comes to this sovereignty and, and establishing, becoming more of a sovereign being, I just recall the other day I had a random conversation. One of my friends, I guess she got pulled over by the cops. Maybe she was speeding or something. And you know, she downed the window and, and the cop was asking her a few questions and she was like, you know, like, you don't have the right to, to pull me over. She said something like that, like, you, you can't touch me. And he was like, oh, 
like are you are you sovereign <laughs> the, cop, the cop asked her you know are you are you sovereign and she she was shocked that the cop knew about you know the the whole thing so when it comes to the step-by-step -step process what could you what could you share or explain to someone that of, of how to become more sovereign and even the reason why they would want to be sovereign yeah um well the process is is really just a a shift in mindset it's um really like a spiritual shift that you've got to go through um and um kind of so right now i'm actually taking a course um to guide me through it because there's a lot of like contracts you'll have to break that you've created um with the government um and you were right you were exactly right where when you said like we're kind of burst into it so you know when we're born we're given a birth certificate obviously that you know our parents sign um and this is actually a trust that's created um are all caps name so my name would be Allison Delks but the way they would spell it on my birth certificate is in all caps letters um, then you're given like the social security number which is pretty much a um, it's a, pretty much a business EIN so you're pretty much born into a system where you are a um, a product of a um, corporation so the United States Corporation um, and so it's <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to explain it because it's really deep and I'm still learning all about it. But um, we're pretty much operating operating in a jurisdiction that is um, the laws of the sea. Um, and the way they did this is because we are birthed through a canal. So, and we're birthed through water. Because when you come out of the womb, you're inside the amniotic fluid, you're inside the water. So they're able to kind of um, implement this... Um, this like dual legal system and um we're kind of birthed into it in that way but yeah i'm seeing some people um comment on here and yeah so they're saying like fake characters so you have like a straw man which is your all caps name um and things like that so i don't even know i'm getting carried away no get um, carried away <laughs> let's get carried away <laughs> like, I, i'm trying to get carried away i'm trying to find out you know more about this so yeah, Felix is saying a fake character. Mm -hmm. And then we have Marco, who is saying, pretty sure this is worldwide. And you can change your name like the font under maritime laws. So these are along the lines is what you're yeah. talking about? Exactly. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So what is something that, go ahead. Sorry. Um, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. So what do you feel like people most like people most underestimate about themselves when it comes to who we are like our identity or what we've been given like the life that we've been given the the laws that we've been given the roles that we've been given what do we most underestimate about what freedom actually means yeah i think um yeah yeah i think it's just kind of um yeah we do underestimate because we are we are as as natural men and women humans that have flesh living beings um we actually have a lot more freedom than is given to us so um you know that's why i i think you've heard me say like dual legal system so we can operate under english common law which is um backed by the constitution and then we can also operate under um you know the the british military law which is the jurisdiction that our straw man would operate under um so you know this whole time i never knew like oh this is like you know i i'm a natural human and i have these rights that are um protected by the constitution um but i've been living in this other system with like a fake character um who they've attached my natural living body to this fake corporate entity that has like a social and all these things and a credit score and um you know 
you you pretty much have to have contracts with the government in order to do anything if you're operating under that system. So, for example, like to drive a car, you have to have a license. Um, you have to register your car. You have to have a marriage license to get married. Um, there's just, it just goes on and on and on. Um, but really, like the example you were talking about, where your friend got pulled over and she um was asserting her rights as a natural living flesh human woman um it's like so um there's certain there's certain words and phrases that you have to use differently so if you are if you are traveling as a sovereign being and somebody pulls you over you you would say like i'm not driving a car i'm traveling in my land vessel in the state known as indiana so um, there's a lot that you have to learn and um, know before you can like really assert yourself. You got to have the confidence and the knowledge to do it. So um, that's just everything I'm learning about right now. But I think it really is underestimated. I mean, even it even goes on to um, like discharging debt and things like that. So a lot of it has to do with money and the banking system. And really, we are extremely powerful since we were given a birth certificate and a social security number um you know we have the power to use our birth certificate our trust to um discharge debts and things like that so it's crazy when i found out that we are the creditors like my mind blew like <laughs> we are the uh the whole system is backed by um uh pretty much how do I explain this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I just, I, I was like thinking about it. I was like, am I even going to get into talking about this? Because I'm still learning all about it. So um, anyways, it just, I think it really is underestimated. We can have as, and that's the main thing is freedom. We can have um, unlimited freedom, whether it's financially, physically, um, time freedom. Um, there's just so much abundance that's here for us. So when we start to um, go down this journey of spiritual growth and start learning about these things, we can really start to access that freedom. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> just like, thank you just for speaking on this because I feel like it's not a topic that is talked about enough. At least I haven't heard about this topic enough in the circles that I associate with. So I haven't had people that really speak about these things, the way that you're speaking about it so eloquently. And you're calling like things to my mind as well. Like even we have Nabiha that's saying, you know, that's called the matrix, you know, she's talking about the matrix. Felix is saying like, if you know your laws or you won't have any, you know, to, to just have the knowledge and the awareness. Cause even when you were talking about the need for a driver's license and the need for a marriage contract and the need for this and that, like when I got married, we were only married officially for, for two years and then we separated, mm -hmm. but it took four years after we separated to, to finally have a divorce, you know, to finally go back and forth with the court. You know, we went back and forth with the court to finally have the divorce, you know, to have it on paper, to finally feel like, <gasps> like we could breathe again. Like we were free. Like we finally felt like we had our separate lives. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. right. Just yeah. Cause like, marriage you you don't need a contract that's an agreement between one spirit and another like one human and another so going through the whole process of um getting a license and get having this contract it's actually a three-way marriage you're you're marrying the government along with the other person <laughs> so technically yeah so yeah, just another way to kind of control to have control over people, but. That's deep, that's deep. Did you say, say that again, Ali? Say that again, I don't know if everybody heard that. You said you're marrying the government, is that what you said? Well, yeah, pretty much. It's it's a three-way contract, so yeah, there, it's, it's a trinity. <laughs> whoa, whoa, and not the trinity that we're used to hearing about, you know, like this is the other trinity. So the yeah. hidden trinity of the government, so with, when it comes to marriage, like what's, I mean, does that kind of sway you against the idea of, of having that kind of contract? Does that make you not want to do that? For me, yeah. Like I don't see myself ever um, 
you know, technically getting a marriage license and going through that whole process with the courts, um, you know, that's a that's a internal agreement that I have with another human being. So I don't see the point in bringing in an, an external part. Um, and when you look at it, when you read the Bible and things like that, like marriage was never, um, never really had to do with government. It was just two people who decided to spend their life together. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that that does kind of push me away from wanting to do it like that. <laughs> this, is, but. this is mind blowing. This is the first time I've ever heard, like, this is the first time I've ever heard a woman, you know, in this, you know, in this day and age where it's all about like, you know, put a ring on it, you know, <laughs> make it official, like, you know, like we're trying to make it official like a referee whistle, right? Like everybody's trying to jump the broom, right. you know, hey, you know, you can't wait forever. Like, let's seal the deal, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But you're, you're saying the opposite. You're like, why, why would I go through that when this is who I want to be with? Let's just be with each other, you yeah. know? That's really how, how I see it. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I agree. And it's really crazy because I'm also learning about trust law. Mm. Um, there's a bunch of different like categories of law and trust law is one that talks about um, how pretty much everything is a trinity. There's three parts to everything. So um, even manifesting anything into this reality requires three, three parts. There's um, the idea and then there's the action, and then there's the product. So um, in order to manifest anything into your life, you first have to have the idea of it, then you have to do the action. So you have to do the work in order to um, achieve or actually manifest something, and then you finally have the product. So it's like anything that's that's manifested in this realm, anything that's created in this realm goes through like a three-part process. Um, and of course, you know, you've heard of the Holy Trinity and the Bible and um, all these things in it. And, um, you know, you, it's, it's just really deep. It all relates to trust law. So that's kind of what I'm getting into right now also. Mm -hmm. Thank you for explaining this, you know, and breaking these things down because it sounds like there's so much symbolism. You know, it sounds like it's almost esoteric. It like flies right by. They, they say the truth is hidden in plain sight. Yeah. Yeah. In plain sight, like right, right in front of your eyes, is like people would rarely look for the truth when it's right in front of them. Yeah. You know, they would never know it. They would never know it. So another thing that you said as well, Ali, that kind of gave me goosebumps was the concept of debt. You know, credit score and debt and all of this stuff. There's so much fear surrounding being in debt, accruing debt, amounting debt, amassing debt. And I remember that there was, um, I had a live conversation with a, a multimillionaire mm -hmm. and he had, he had gotten so much, but he had, you know, he had come from, a, from very humble beginnings, you know, when he was just, you know, with his family, just trying to make it. And he said that there was a point where he just stopped paying like his, his debt, like he just stopped paying. And I was like, uh -huh what do you mean you stopped paying? Like, weren't you worried about, you know, like he said, yeah, I just quit my job. I just quit my job. I just stopped. And I was like, what? Like, what is it about your, uh, you know, your, your credit score, your debt, your this and your that. And he was like, what are they going to do? He, was, he, was like, he honestly, he said, he's like, what did they can't do anything to you? He yeah. Like, it's just, just going to keep going down. It did, I didn't care. He said, I didn't care. <laughs> I was where I just, I didn't care. Yeah. You know? It blew my mind. I, I never was taught to think like that. Yeah. You know, I was taught that your your banking account is like a launching pad. You know, money just comes in and then goes out for a bill. And then it comes in and goes out for your card. And then it goes in yeah. and goes out a letter or a note or something like It just keeps going in and out. Right. But right. there's nothing they can do, he said. I said, what? <laughs> you know, so please speak on this. Sure. Um, and yeah, and I'm still learning the process of di discharging debt. So I'm definitely no expert. Um, you know, I've started the process for certain things, um, but I'm still, you know, working on it, um, on these projects and things. But um, yes, yeah, pretty much we do have the ability to discharge debt legally and lawfully. And even without it affecting your credit score, um, 
So, you know, of course, if you just decide to just stop paying all your debt, then it is going to affect your credit score and things like that. But there's a certain way to go about it um, where you can actually discharge your debt. Um, and, you're, and we're given this right um, because we do have a social security number, which means we are the creditors in the first place. So it's, it's pretty much a whole scam loans and th things like this and um i can't really explain it <laughs> i'm still learning um and the the document i read about it was like pretty long so it's it's definitely really deep um but yeah we do have the ability to discharge our debt um and there was something else i i heard you say that i forgot what it was but i wanted to talk about it <laughs> trying to remember this. Um, oh yeah you were talking about money and how you know the money goes into our account it's almost like we, it comes right out again because we have to pay bills and things like that um, so um, yeah it's crazy because you know it's not even real money um, it's it's a whole fiat system with fiat money and it's not even backed by real gold we're pretty much just passing around federal federal reserve notes and things like that. So it's really crazy. <laughs> it, is. it is. It's like, so we're just passing it around. Like, um, like we, the only reason that it exists is because we believe that it exists. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It, it's, it's backed by the faith and credit of the people. So we're the ones who, you know, our energy is what backs the money, this fiat system that we have. Um, so there's no real like value. It's, it's, it was originally supposed to be backed by silver and gold, but at one point they, you know, got rid of all that. And um, yeah, now there's no real value to it. So it's kind of like we're just trading paper. Um, <laughs> wow. wow. Illusory is just like a wisp of smoke. It's like a puff of air. It's just, numbers on a screen yeah that mean you know anything they're just numbers so there was a lady and i remember hearing this and she went into her bank account one day and it was just you know just random just to check how much she had in there and she had like thousands of dollars in there yeah looked at her, her account and it said she had nothing in there like nothing like zero dollars it was just zeroed out there was nothing and she was like, what? And she drove to the bank and she went to the bank and she asked them about it. Like, what is this? And they said, oh, oh, just give us a second. We're just, we were just moving things around, you know, just give us a moment. And then sure enough, she looked again and all her money was right back in there, right? So she witnessed like a glitch. In oh the my God. Oh, she witnessed, she got to see it. She got to see that it wasn't even hers. You know, she yeah. felt like, the security, you know, go ahead. I, I was saying, yeah, like it, it could just be taken away. Like <laughs> at, at any point in time. Yeah. 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 So when it comes to, you know, the sense of security or the sense of like, you know, I mean, we know we can't take these things with us anyway, but when there's so much fear and anxiety and just so much turmoil surrounding trying to get something that doesn't even exist, that's not even real, like right. how do you somebody breaks out of that mentality yeah i think it's about um getting into the mentality of having assets and things like that instead of like this money this fake money um because you know there's who knows what's gonna happen i mean when you said like when you mentioned that it made me think about how you know there's a lot of people saying there's gonna be like these solar flares or there's gonna be a blackout or something like this that may occur sometime soon and all the technology is just gonna shut down so it it, it brought that to mind because i'm like at that point nobody's gonna have money we're not gonna be able to use credit cards or anything like that so i think it's important to really value things like knowing how to survive without money so knowing how to grow your own food um even knowing how like preparing your body to fast like understanding, you know, what to do when you don't have food. Um, so knowing about like chronic energy, which is something that you are an expert on. Um, and knowing, understanding how to build and things like that. So 
valuing those things and how to live um, sustainably, self-sustainably without money. So having skills and things like that. Um, that's something that I really want to get into <laughs> um, is gardening more and um, working on the land and things like that. Um, but um, let's see where we're <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, that makes total sense, Ali, you know, and that's great advice as well for the person who does fall into that fear mentality of how will I survive? You know? Yeah. How will I thrive right. when, you know, I can't rely on these things that don't exist, mm -hmm. you know, at any point in time, at the drop of a dime, everything can change. Yeah. Right. And just things like acquiring assets, um, like having land and things like that, and then protecting all of your assets within a foreign trust is what's going to be really important <laughs> moving forward. So, um, yeah, so trust law, having your assets um, under a foreign trust is important because then the government can't touch that trust as a foreign trust, um, which is different than a domestic trust. Um, so again, getting into that, that the laws and things like that are really important to know your rights and know your laws and things like that. But um, I would also recommend collecting like silver and gold and things like that too, which I haven't done yet, but I would love to <laughs> buy some silver and gold to have. Um, and my dream and my vision would one day to have like to go back to a trade and barter system um like they used to do in ancient times and um things like that so um i would love to see i know there's already some communities that use trade and barter like at farmers markets and things like that so um i love to see that stuff too so just making sure you have skills um to be able to help others and receive in return for what you can do for others wow um, wow trade and barter this is beautiful so so going back in order to move forward yeah yeah exactly going back to how they really functioned um before and really in ancient times um is what i'm looking forward to <laughs> okay can, can you speak on these natural abilities you know and developing your natural abilities when it comes to working with your body working mm -hmm. with Mind, working with you know when it, when you, we don't see resources when if technology is not a factor if money is not a factor and we feel like we don't have resources but we can still be resourceful you know we can still have resourcefulness within us somebody said the that responsibility is your response to the ability you know so when you're understanding your ability to fast that you don't have to constantly be consuming can you touch on that? I know the other day you were going through a fast not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I just did a really short um, three day juice cleanse. Um, I was feeling like, you know, I had consumed some heavier like bread and pasta and stuff like that. So I was like, I really need to cleanse and fast. And also just with the new year um, that happened on Tuesday. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, I just felt called to do a cleanse. So um, I just did a short three day fast where I drank uh, just green juice um, and some herbal tea. And, um, and I think it's really important that people start to one, cleanse their systems because um, the earth really is moving into a higher vibration, a higher frequency. Um, we've been like kind of in this lower frequency. And so I think, um, we need to understand how our bodies can operate with less consumption, like you said. Um, and we can really start to tap into our powers and our abilities when we do cleanse our bodies out. So, um, you know, things like one thing I noticed specifically was like my intuition was really, really heightened during that point um, when I wasn't eating. Um, it's just it's like almost like I predict what was going to happen for my day. It's like I thought about it before it happened. And I'm just like, this is crazy but um yeah so when we do begin to like move into that higher frequency um as people and as humans we the whole earth changes its frequency so the earth is in itself is a living being a living um, mechanism and so um we can really start to tap into our powers when 
we start operating on a higher frequency. So, you know, like um, in ancient times, people would use like telepathy and um, they had just like all these superpowers and um, things like that. And, and we actually do have access to those powers. We just have to cleanse of all cleanse ourselves of all the toxin cleanse our bodies cleanse our minds cleanse our spirits and um really step into that higher frequency um and i always suggest like um so i work with children who um, have a lot of dysregulation whether it's like sensory dysregulation emotional dysregulation things like that and so one of the main things i teach is stillness and mindfulness and um just connecting to yourself um, and connecting to your breath. So, um, you know, I think everybody should be taking conscious breaths every day, deep breaths. Um, and that's really gonna bring you into a state where you will need less food. Um, you will need less, you will just start to consume less. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I feel like I, I just like get off track and start rambling. No, no. <laughs> This is right on like this is right on topic this is right on topic so with your intuition you said that sometimes things just go exactly in alignment or with your intuition what what do you feel like it is most heightened when you're letting go of solid food when you fast that just right on target like what's one of the times that just blew you away you're like how did that even happen i'm trying to think of um like specific instances um it, it was never anything like major like oh, i knew this crazy thing was gonna happen or it would it would just be like small things like throughout my day like i don't i don't know how to small, explain it really but small things. small things like small things and and i like how you mentioned like being in alignment and i feel like one of the main things about um being in alignment is is trusting trusting yourself and trusting the universe, trusting that the universe is setting things up for you in perfect divine alignment for you to reach your highest potential and become your highest self. So, um, you know, like if whenever you do go through the ebbs and flows or the hiccups and things like that, um, just trying to understand that it's all part of the journey and to like just trust the process of it. Um, and that will really bring you into that alignment. So. What I've been trying to do is like just go about my days with ease. So stop like, <laughs> like how do I explain this? <laughs> just finding more ease, um, I guess, and just like really trusting. Like even when things don't go maybe as you would have hoped, um, understanding that that probably happened for a reason. So you know, one easy example I always say is like. Um, say you um, got stuck in traffic and you were late to work and um, you know I always think about well you probably got stuck in traffic for a reason maybe if you didn't get stuck in traffic you would have ended up in a car accident or something worse would have happened so I feel like the universe is always setting things up for um, for your success and so when you are trusting the process you're trusting God you're trusting yourself you're trusting everything around you um to create opportunity and um just create an environment where you can reach your highest self so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know they do say like um you know if a plant or a flower is is not growing you know you don't change the flower or the plant per se you 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 move it to an environment you know that allows it to flourish you yeah. know you, you change the environment and now it can blossom and bloom. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, so yeah, I think it's important. Environment is so important to surround yourself with, you know, people, um, the right people, um, being in the right places, p protecting your energy. So um, being careful about who you're sharing energy with, especially on an intimate level. Um, just certain things like that. So just really protecting your being um, is definitely important, I think. Yeah. And Ali, you know, I like how you said, especially on an intimate level, you know, yeah. when it comes to sharing your energy with people on an intimate level, why do you feel like people 
might take that for granted and might not really understand how powerful that is. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with um, the media and how we've grown up um, and, and kind of what we've been taught in terms of um, these intimate connections. And we haven't really been, we, we were never really taught how, um, how truly important they are and how important it is to um, choose somebody that you would like to connect with on a spiritual level because when you get into intimacy, you're really like um, sharing deep spiritual energy. Um, it's a sacred energy exchange. So um, when you are opening yourself up to different spirits and things like that, um, it can get kind of dangerous if you're not careful. So um, I think that we, we were never really taught the importance of that growing up, you know. Um, we weren't really taught how, how deep that really is on a spiritual level and of course it's, it's funny because it's physical but it's also very spiritual and i feel like we've always kind of just use it viewed it as something physical yeah yeah, yeah. When, when you say opening yourself up this is interesting because i don't often hear people refer to other people are you referring to other people as spirits when you say opening yourself up to other spirits yeah, yeah. So when you are um, engaging in int intimacy in that way, um, you are you are allow you are opening yourself up to um, the energy of other spirits to your being and um, things like that. So you're really sharing that that sacred energy with them. So you know, if there's people who have gone through um, different traumas or things like that, then you're kind of taking on all those things that they've gone through. And um, so, yeah, it, it, it be careful and mindful and things like that. But mm -hmm. Cause you know, I know that another word for alcohol is spirits. Yeah. You know, like how people can be drunk on alcohol yeah. and it feels like their body is not there their own, their mind is not their own, their spirit has been inhabited, like their vessel yeah. for something else. You know, they've, they've now they've opened them up, they've opened themselves up to, to any entity, you yeah. know, to the entities that they're entertaining, you know? Yeah. So when it comes to us in having that divine counterpart or having that soulmate or having that, you know, person, you're saying we need to be careful yeah. about these spirits, like that energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that you mentioned the alcohol part um, because that's that's very true that they are spirits. When you are drink, consuming alcohol, um, you are opening yourself up to other entities and things like that. Um, and um, let's see, I think that, that alcohol has been like kind of glorified in our society it's like anytime somebody wants to enjoy or celebrate or things like that it typically involves alcohol um and in the society we live in today and um i really think that you know they the media has kind of pushed this onto us because um it really lowers our consciousness as as a society so consuming alcohol allowing you know entities that aren't of the highest or the most good <laughs> um, to, to come into our being and um, things like that. And I think it really has had an effect on our consciousness. So, you know, you see a lot of people nowadays who um, are stepping into their spiritual journeys who decide not to consume alcohol anymore. And um, I think that's really great. Um, and I think that that's what's gonna, that's gonna be part of what's gonna bring our, um, our earth into, you know, a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, well, it's all part of it. It's all part of that cohesion, that coming together. Because, you know, even when I was in Mexico, you know, I was in uh, Puerto Morelos. Yeah. And I, there, was, there was a guy hollering out, there was a guy hollering out, free tequila. <laughs> free. He said, free tequila. Like, he was hollering in the street, like, free, come get it. You know, free tequila. They were giving it to people so i mean it's it's so huge and like you said you know we're we're entertaining so many things so many entities so many spirits 
but when it comes to the the relationship aspect the the intimacy aspect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just having somebody who you you are coming together with your joining some people they really do want the physical some yeah. care more about the emotional yeah. but what does it feel for you when you want to be elevated on a spiritual level what does that spiritual elevation really mean for you yeah well i think that we're all um here to have a i mean we're in a 3d reality but we're also spiritual beings so i think that um, we come here to, in order to learn certain lessons um, and grow our spirit. I think that's like the main reason why we come here to earth <laughs> through the portal of a woman and a womb. Um, so um, it's the most important thing to me is to grow spiritually. Um, and, um, you know, on my spirit, spiritual journey, I really realized that it's all about the unity and the oneness and love. Um, so all those words really mean the same thing to me. And I think that with every lesson, um, the, the real outcome and what we are really meant to learn and understand or overstand here is, um, is coming back to that oneness, coming back to that unity as, as living beings um, and that unity with all living things here on earth. Um, and the way that we can achieve an understanding or overstanding understanding for everything is through love. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that um, that's the most important, <laughs> the most important part of this journey is just um, growing and, and learning the lessons you're meant to learn and just um, growing your spirit. Okay. So as one lady said, you know, I, I would drive for Lyft a lot and I had a lot of passengers and they would pass along, you know, a lot of wisdom and gems to me. And one lady told me, Ali, she said, if it doesn't, she said, if it don't evolve me, it don't involve me. <laughs> and she meant what she said. Yeah. You know, she meant what she said. She said, if it don't. If it don't evolve me, it don't involve me. So when you're in a relationship or if you have like a partner and you don't feel like this is spiritually like evolving, like you don't feel like you're learning, mm -hmm. you don't feel like you're discerning certain things, you don't feel like you're you're ascending. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's like a deal breaker or you want to discontinue that connection or or how does that reflection like how does that work with you? Yeah. Most Definitely. I mean, I, I feel like um, as far as getting into a relationship or having a partner, you've really got to be in alignment with um, with helping each other grow um, and helping each other evolve. Like you said, that's a great word is, is evolve. Um, and so if you're not um, able to learn from one another and able to teach one another and able to grow together, then, um, yeah, I, I would not <laughs> go into a relationship like that or continue a relationship like that. So for me, that's one of the most important things um, to look for in a partner is um, how connected they are to spirit and how dedicated they are to evolving and growing and um, learning the lessons here that we go through here on earth and in this realm. Yeah. And thank, thank you for sharing that because it's a powerful testimony. It really does sound like you've had some hands-on experience, you know, it, it sounds like you've gone through it th through a few trials, you know, trial and errors, like yeah. for your, for yourself to understand what is for you and what is not for you. Right. Cause we're, we're, you know, circling back to the loneliness, you know, you talked about sometimes, it's hard to be alone without being lonely. And how some, some people, they, they tie their emotional, they have an emotional tether towards another person, another spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and they fear it, they fear it, right? Not being with a spirit is, is something that they fear, you know, yeah. to, have, to not have somebody else that is always near, you know? Right. So when, when somebody is like, um, you know, they have that, they call it separation anxiety, or they feel that they, they're not complete without another person, that they're not whole, Yeah, you know? And 
like what do you have to say for it's a it's one thing to say okay this is something that brings satisfaction mm -hmm. but it's another thing to say that it might be a distraction right? yeah. Can you yeah 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 that's very true um i think i think that it is important to be able to um to be comfortable by yourself and and in your own spirit and in solitude um and and feel that wholeness like i don't think um you know for a minute i was searching for somebody to complete me <laughs> for a long while and i was miserable until i decided to just um be whole within myself and so um so I think that's one of the main lessons that I had to learn. Um, and then as you, and then I think that as you are growing um, individually, you're gonna attract the, the right partner and divine timing. So I think it's important not to like, um, to stress yourself out about finding a partner or um, attracting that person because it's really gonna happen in divine timing um exactly when it's supposed to and that's really what i believe so i've kind of shifted from being like oh i need to find i need to find my partner to complete me and things like that to just being excited about what i'm learning and what i'm growing through and focusing on myself and understanding that um god and the universe is all working for me and for my highest um alignment and and that everything's going to come together exactly when it's supposed to and that you know the the correct partner will be attracted you will attract the right partner um and when you when you really step into your own power and things like that um and then when you do it becomes a divine um which is beautiful so <laughs> beautiful and it's so freeing you know like just to hear the way that you say that even Nabiha is agreeing with you, you know, she's agreeing. It's so freeing. It's so freeing to, to be able to say, hey, you know what? Divine timing. Yeah. You know, divine timing. Like with all the pressures of society, maybe friends, family members, you know, loved ones looking at, at someone and saying, well, like, when are you going to, you know, when are you going to settle down? When are you going to tie the knot? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? And, you know, all the pressure of, you know, I'm, I'm not getting any younger, um, you know, time is passing, time is elapsing, but you're like, hey, divine, no, no sweat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And for a minute, it, it was that was not the case. Like, I have really had to change my mindset and become more comfortable with just because you're right, there is so much pressure from um, society. And when you reach a certain age, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to, you know, get married and start a family already. And of course, that is what I want. But I'm not going to like, um, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm moving with ease. I'm trying not to like force anything. So um, yeah, and I'm way happier now. So yeah, it shows, you know, we feel your joy, we feel your, your bliss, we feel your energy, you know, we feel your happiness, we feel your contentment, we feel your peace. And I, <laughs> last time, Ali, we were talking about music and you were saying specifically Erica Badu, you said <laughs> Andrell, and you said Cleo Soul as well, were some of the artists that during periods of time when you did feel like it was miserable or you, there was a lack of self-love, mm -hmm. certain music that you listened to that, that made you feel that self-love again, that made you appreciate yourself in a better way is that still the same today yeah i would say um yeah those three artists are still my my top i would say my top artists to listen to i love all of them um i've been getting into a lot of lauren hill lately um with what i'm like studying um you know with, with what i'm studying um with the law and things like that she she really goes deep into like um freedom and and things like that. Her lyrics are very powerful. So I've been listening to Lauren Hill a lot lately too. So I would add that one to my list as well. <laughs> I remember the, the miseducation of Lauren Hill, yeah. you know, timeless. Yeah, timeless. really, really timeless. What, what, 
What's one of your favorite records by Lauryn Hill? Like, what's one of your favorite songs? Um, um, I like the song Freedom Time. Um, Adam Lives in Theory is one of my favorite. I love Adam Lives in Theory. Um, I would definitely check that one out. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's just on the acoustic. It's live. And um, yeah, her, her lyrics are very deep and powerful. So, um, you know, for those with eyes to see, <laughs> Can understand <laughs> yeah I remember one of the one of my favorite lyrics by Lauren Hill was she said deep in my heart the answer it wasn't it wasn't me and I made up my mind to define my own destiny you know yeah like like deep in my heart the answer was always in me yeah you know? like what a, what a freedom to have that to know that the answer you were searching for was with you all along, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, um, the wisdom and everything is uh, held deep within our DNA. So it's really just activating our DNA and tapping into that wisdom that we do have within us. So, you know, all the wisdom from all the ancestors are, are inside every cell. <laughs> so yeah encoded encoded you got you got all the codes for the matrix right you got all the codes already <laughs> well, that's exactly it and it's so funny because i'm over here studying like u.s code blah 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 and i'm like these are actually the codes to the matrix like i'm cracking the codes this is crazy <laughs> i love that you know the 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 hacker the code cracker you know <laughs> doing it you're doing it you're making it happen you're 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 turning the impossible you're making it possible you know because so many people they don't feel like they could ever break out of the mold or break out of the constraints or the shackles that they feel held down by but right. you're you're making it happen and i love that you're doing it with ease you know <laughs> they say you gotta work hard to make it look easy <laughs> yeah you're making it look easy so just thank you for this divine wisdom Thank you for sharing your learnings. You know, thank you for just, you know, continuing to evolve, continuing to raise yourself, to raise your awareness, but also to let other people know what's possible for them as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jerome. And thank you so much for having me on here and um, having this amazing conversation. <laughs> it's always amazing, always amazing. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. You you too. Thanks, Jerome. It was such a pleasure to talk to you today. <laughs>